The numbers behind Tesla Incorporated's long-distance semi-electric trucks are close to making sense for haulers looking at a shift away from diesel that may save them tens of thousands of dollars a year, according to an executive with DHL. Jim Monkmeyer, president, transportation at DHL supply chain, was among the first to order the truck Silicon Valley billionaire Elon Musk's company is expected to begin churning out in 2019. He says the 10 trucks ordered are a test run and that he is still years away from switching the majority of his fleet of trucks to electric. But he is taking heed of a major shift away from diesel and the money it could save DHL. He says he could potentially pay off the difference between the purchase price of a Tesla semi and a traditional diesel truck in less than two years, thanks to savings on maintenance and fuel. Monkmeyer told Reuters in an interview from his office in Columbus, Ohio, we are estimating that we could have payback within a year and a half based on energy usage as well as lower maintenance cost. The maintenance savings can be enormous as well. Just because the engines are much simpler in terms of the number of parts and the complexities of the parts. The payback benefit is one of the keys to the success of the new generation of electric trucks and DHL, a unit of Germany's Deutsche Post, has a history in the area, having already introduced 5,000 of its own electric scooter vans for local deliveries. The two-year timeline also chimes with assurances being given by Daimler AG's van unit to customers interested in its forthcoming electric sprinter van that the total cost of ownership will be the same as the cost to own and operate a conventional van over a few years. Monkmeyer says he does not expect to buy just Tesla electric trucks, but the in-depth discussions on price and feasibility that DHL is running on the trucks are in line with several small and large international haulers who spoke to Reuters. A truck runs around 65,000 to 100,000 miles a year, and Tesla has promised that 20% saving on the per-mile operating costs truckers pay now, estimating its new semi will cost $1.26 per mile compared to what it says are industry standards of around $1.51 for diesel trucks. Analysts, however, say the figures continue to evolve. The $1.51 cost assumes prices for diesel fuel and that fuel economy costs remain static. They also say fuel efficiency for diesel trucks is expected to advance further, with a compounding improvement in the high single digits by 2020, potentially limiting the cost savings advantage suggested by Tesla. Jeffrey's analyst Stephen Volkman said, the problem is Tesla are aiming at a moving target, and even with that the electric trucks would be lower cost in terms of operation, but it wouldn't be quite as big a difference. Monkmeyer says the company is still mapping out costs, but believes the two trucks already look like they will be close enough to make the switch feasible. Still, he says larger concerns loom around Tesla's charging infrastructure and how haulers plan to switch from pumps in depots to swift mega-charging of electric vehicles. He says, the biggest issue is going to be how is that grid provided and how is it supported and how quickly can we get a network out there for use nationwide, throughout North America, throughout the world. That's a big question mark. So that to me would be one limiting factor. Executives at General Motors are clearly excited about the potential for their all-new full-size pickups the 2019 Chevrolet Silverado and GMC Sierra. Both are set to go into production late this year, and GM expects both to bring home more profits per truck than the current Silverado and Sierra. But GM's chief financial officer, Chuck Stevens, recently made clear that the road from here to those fat profits would be a bumpy one, because putting these new pickups into production won't be simple. While GM won't begin production of the new trucks until the fourth quarter of 2018, it has already begun making the extensive changes to its factories that will be required to build them. GM is clearly hoping to learn from our rival Ford Motor Company's experience.
the launch of Ford's all-new 2015 F-150 followed months of fevered work. That new F-150 had aluminum body panels instead of the steel panels of its predecessor, meaning that it required very different tooling and processes to build. Ford had to essentially gut and rebuild two of its busiest factories at a moment when pickup demand was booming. Ford pulled it off, but not without a cost. The company warned beforehand that it would lose about 90,000 units of production. It had built up inventories of 2014 model year pickups before beginning the factory conversions, but still, Ford's pickup sales lagged for several months while it worked to get the factories up and running again. Helped by a very strong market, the new F-150 helped carry Ford to record profits in 2015 and 2016. But here in 2018, the US new car market is looking a little ragged, and so GM has come up with a plan that it hopes will improve somewhat on Ford's experience. GM's new trucks don't have all aluminum body panels. But as Stevens explained during GM's earnings call this week, the new trucks really are all new, completely different from the current models. That means GM has to make extensive, and expensive, changes to major sections of its truck factories that assemble the truck's bodies and chassis. Those changes have already begun, and they're already having an impact. Stevens said that investors should expect a 60,000-unit decline in GM shipments in North America in the first quarter, largely due to downtime at GM's pickup factories. That's a big hit. To put it in perspective, while GM doesn't release exact production figures for every model, we know that it sold about 178,000 Silverados and Sierras combined in the US in the first three months of 2017. GM is losing production equivalent to a third of its full-size pickup sales in the first quarter of last year. Given the profitability of these trucks, that's a heavy hit. How GM will keep that number from getting worse? In total, Stevens said, GM expects to lose about 120,000 units of production in 2018 due to factory changes needed to make the all-new trucks. But there's a twist, GM has a complicated plan to boost production of its current trucks while some of its factories are retooled. In a nutshell, GM's Ford Wayne Assembly Plant, in Roanoke, Indiana, will send partially assembled trucks and parts to its highly flexible Oshawa assembly plant, in Ontario, which will paint and finish the trucks. If that sounds a little bit Rube Goldberg, well, it is. It's a hack, one that GM has nicknamed the Oshawa Shuttle. They hope the shuttle will allow them get about 60,000 extra 2018 model pickups built this year. If it works, it will leave GM with a production decline of about 60,000. That's not ideal, but it beats the 90,000 trucks that Ford lost in 2014 and 2015. More importantly, while GM will probably take a hit to its first quarter results, it should be able to make up some of the lost profit by year end. The Honda Civic Type R doesn't just look fast, it is fast. It's proven this by setting a front-wheel drive Nürburgring lap record. But not about to rest on its laurels, Honda plans to make lap record attempts at other tracks as well with former Formula One champion Jensen Button behind the wheel. This is similar to what Honda did with the previous generation Civic Type R, setting records at Silverstone, Spaffen Court Champs, Monza, Estrill and Hungering in 2016. This year, Honda will return to Silverstone in the UK, Spaffen Core Champs in Belgium, and Estrell in Portugal to set new records with the new model. Button will not be the only driver to make these record attempts. He will be joined by World Touring Car Cup drivers Chiago Montero and Esteban Guerreri, as well as NSX Super GT driver Bertrand Baguette. Button himself also competes in NSX Super GT. If any car is ready to capture some front-wheel drive lap records, it's the Civic Type R. Despite its high expectations, it's already proven to be an underrated car with the engine rated at 306 horsepower and at the crank, 
actually generated 295 horsepower at the wheels, indicating a significantly higher power output than advertised. And that's even before a rumored Civic Type RS and other variants become available.